You know, it is about time we gave Aquaman some darn respect. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another LaserDude 99 review. So, when DC was doing their relaunch and, you know, the new 52 books, one thing that I was really curious about was Aquaman. Mostly because it was written by Jeff Johns, and it was supposed to kind of, even though the new 52 happened, this was basically supposed to be what happened after he got back from the dead. It's very strange to me how Aquaman got dubbed the kitty, useless, dumb superhero. And it doesn't make sense to me how that happened. I mean, it, from my, in my point of view, it, I think it started with the Super Friends TV show and how Aquaman was a major reoccurring character on there. Anytime there was water, Aquaman was there. And that's what he used, the water, and talked to whales or dolphins or whatever. And they came to his back and call. You know, everyone was super cheesy on that show. Batman was super cheesy. Superman was super cheesy. Every character was super cheesy on that show. But the characters became more evolved and deeper and, you know, stronger characters. And all the characters did that in comic books. But Aquaman was always considered to be the cheesy character. Oh, he talks to fish. And so I was really looking forward to seeing Jeff Johns write this. Because if there's something that Jeff Johns has been really good at doing, for me at least, it's been taking characters from the Silver Age and sometimes the Golden Age of comic books and making them viable nowadays. You know, he did it with Green Lantern Rebirth and he did it with Flash Rebirth. So I really was looking forward to his take on Aquaman. The reason I bring up how the world kind of views Aquaman, for those who know of him, is because that is actually a th central theme in this story. It's one of the ongoing themes of Aquaman being looked at as a joke. They take that concept and put it into the DC Universe. And this opening is one of a, a really f good opening. There, it starts with a bunch of criminals stealing an armored car. And when they see Aquaman, they start laughing at him. They, or they start laughing like, oh, that's Aquaman, they're going to run him over. And he impales the armored truck on his uh, trident and flips them over. And then one of the guys gets up, starts shooting at him. And I like this one, Aquaman, because they've done this a couple times with Aquaman, where the bullets are shooting at him, they're bouncing off him, and then one hits him in the head. And he goes like... And he has this look like, yeah... That hurt. I don't care. Sort of looking. I thought, yeah, that's awesome. But the thing is, even after that, after that scene, the police officers are like, oh, do you need a glass of water? And, uh, you know, I, I like how this plays on the public's perception of Aquaman. The pol police and the criminals and the everybody in this world don't really know how to feel around Aquaman. And it's kind of the same with even the average comic book fan, when it comes to Aquaman, they don't even know how to feel, how to react when it comes to him. Because it's like he's been one of those characters that's always been there, but nobody really knew. Not saying there's never been any major Aquaman fan, I'm sure there has, but there's he's never gotten too much stuff outside of the public perception to you know for audience to really identify with. And then one of my favorite moments after that, I, I know I'm kind of going to the beginning, but I like this beginning a lot. He goes into a seafood restaurant and orders fish and chips. And, and he, they address something in here that I think is really important, that Aquaman doesn't talk to fish. He doesn't talk to fish. He doesn't say, hey, you are fish, can you uh, come over here and let me a hand? No, he, he just uses his telepathy to tell Aqua Life to do what he wants. He tells them to do what he wants. 
It's not that he talks to fish. It doesn't work that way. But anyway, there's um, enough about the, the opening. The, there's two major story... Well, no, there's three. There's three stories going on here. The first one, the main one, is why this book is, book is called The Trench. I remember seeing the cover, and I thought it was like he still had the ability to control dead sea life like he did in Brightest Day. But no, it's actually more of uh, these, these things, these... I don't know how to describe these like fish creatures are these these creatures that have lived under the water in the deepest depth of the ocean and their species is dying off so then they they come up to the they, they didn't even know there is an above outside of water and so they swim up come onto land and start killing and eating humans because that's their only instinct is food 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 and so Aquaman has to deal with these piranha-like creatures that are uh, des just ravaging the city. The thing that I like is these creatures look really creepy and really uh, like threatening. Like they, they, they actually look like they could, uh, they can do some damage. And but I also like that their intelligence is pretty limited, and Aqu but Aquaman can you know kind of hear their thoughts, but it's it's pretty limited. It's the basic intelligence, you know eat well that's basically all we see of them but i like that they're not just like this invading underwater fish people that's always been there but then decide to go against the overworld because you know that story's been done to death i think with stuff like aquaman and and so they just have this underwater these underwater creatures going up to eat and it's really done well the next story in here is involves stuff more of Aquaman having to deal with stuff in Atlantis. He doesn't go to Atlantis, but like in the beginning of this book, he decides that look, I'm done with Atlantis. I'm not going back. And um, Mir Mira and him decide to start a new life on the surface. Like not say they're never going to go underwater, but he's done. He's done with Atlantis. But then something happens with him. And it involves Atlanteans, but you don't really know what. And then he inv then he lands in a desert. When I first saw this, I'm like, oh shoot, this is not good. Aquaman is lost in a desert. And you're just like, oh, sh this is the worst place he could possibly be. But uh, that, that story, there's not a whole lot of action. There's just a little bit, and it's more set up for future books. And there's some setup in the trench story as well. But then there's a, another story that is actually more involved with Mira. See, Mira not being... She, like, Aquaman, Arthur, is, at the very least, he's been underwater and above. So he kind of knows how both cultures work. Mira is still kind of adjusting to a human life. And so, like, when a guy in a store comes up to her... A pervert comes up to her and tries to. Mm -hmm. uh, she grabs his arm and just squeezes slightly and breaks his arm, and and she in her mind she's just defending her honor. You know she's not like oh you evil man. <laughs> she's just like look I told him to back off he didn't back off and it's in my mind it's very similar to a woman if a guy came up to her like that pepper pepper spraying him she's just using her own strengths. But the story is really good because you really get to see how she's adjusting to human life. And there's other stuff in this story too, but I don't want to give it away. But she's, she's adjusting to a human life and how that really applies to her. The artwork in this book is really good. And I think it's they really work hard with it because let me tell you something. I've always, always hated underwater. I've always hated underwater. And like under like there there's only two underwater movies that I like, and that's Sphere and um, The Abyss. And Finding Nemo, I can't forget about Finding Nemo. And even The Abyss, I just I, I enjoy. But like for underwater, it, when something is underwater, that means usually that it's going very very slowly. And fortunately, this book is not paced slowly, and the water scenes are not just a fight underwater. They're varied, and, and they're, you know, the, the, there's a balance, I think, between underwater stuff and on-land stuff. And that, I think, is good, because 
I think that people kind of start to lose interest with Aquaman when it's all underwater. You know, one thing that has always bugged me is that people have always said that Aquaman is so lame because he can, you know, talk to fish. But Namor, a character that, in my mind, if I'm remembering correctly, Namor, who has been around longer than Aquaman, has the exact same powers and is also King of Atlantis, doesn't get the same treatment. Nobody says Namor is the most worthless character. I mean, it's, nobody says stuff like that. Nobody says, like, oh, Namor, oh, he can't do anything, he just talks to fish. Maybe, I think the reason probably is because he's a humongous a-hole the whole time. Oh, I cannot stand Namor. And you know what's funny? They tried to put more of Namor's personality into Aquaman, and that's when I started to dislike Aquaman. You know, when he was the beard and the hook, and he's just like, Get out of Atlantis! Here, he's portrayed as a kind guy, and he... You know what? When people say crap to him, he just doesn't pay them any mind. He just goes along his way. It, he's not doing stuff for them. He's doing it for, you know, to, for the betterment of the city. And Mira is more the one that doesn't take any crap. He's like, look, you call me Aquaman, woman, I'm going to take you out. And I like their dynamic. Their dynamic together is very well handled, and I like that... I just like this book. I'm not sure if I'm going to be picking up any more Aquaman books after this, but at the very least, I'm intrigued and I'm interested and I'm wanting to... I'm, I'm, I'm curious of where it's going to go next. There's a lot of setup in this book that it leaves for future stories, but also a lot of good stuff that it handles on Aquaman himself. If you're thinking of getting into a superhero that's maybe a little bit out of the norm, here you go. Aquaman. The guy's not worthless. Okay? There are way more worthless characters in comic books. Remember, it's not the powers that make a character interesting. It's the writer. And so I am giving Aquaman the Trench a... 7.5 out of 10. It's an enjoyable read, and guys, if you have never found yourself to have any respect for Aquaman, check it out. Just is check check it out because it's he's a, he's a it's a great introduction to the character if you've never read him before, and it's a great way to address those stinking cliches that people say about Aquaman all the time and disprove them. Aquaman is awesome. So remember, guys. I'm Laser Dude 99, and if I don't like it, it's not worth it. See you around. Be sure to check out more of my other videos on my channel, and wait for more coming soon.